Do you like treasure hunting? Well, so do I. The thrill of the hunt is just so exciting, just trying to find something that nobody else even knows is there. Even if I don't find anything, that is okay. And I recently found out about a place out in Arkansas called Crater of Diamonds, where they'll literally let you go out and mine for diamonds and keep everything you find. Yes, let's do this. So I've looked up all the tools needed to go out here and mine these diamonds and I have everything except for, well, they call them sifting boxes or sifting screens. It's a way to kind of to separate the big rocks from the small stones so you can see everything a little bit easier. So. Let's see if we can make some. So the first thing I did was jump on Amazon and buy what they call either hardware cloth or wire mesh. These come in a bunch of different sizes. I have quarter inch and 1 20th of an inch. This is the quarter inch wire and just as the name suggests, there's roughly four holes per inch going across and up and down. So four going this way, four going this way, and in a square inch, there's roughly 16 holes. The second wire is called 20 mesh or 1 20th of an inch. Roughly, there are 20 holes going down per inch and 20 holes going across, so therefore there should be roughly 400 holes per square inch in this material. So my plan is to make two separate boxes, one with the quarter inch and one with the 20 mesh, and have the quarter inch kind of sit inside the 20 mesh box. That way I can sift out all the big stuff that I don't need and be able to easily sift through and see all the good stuff that I'd like to find. Now I've seen these boxes made out of metal, plastic, and wood, so I'm gonna make these out of some wood. And to hopefully save a little bit of time and money, I'm gonna be using furring strips. This is a one by four and this is a one by two. And here's a quick idea showing you what I'm planning on building. Each of these boxes is gonna have a lower section and an upper section. The lower section here is actually going to house the mesh wire so I can keep everything under control. And then it's gonna have an upper section here so that the material doesn't fall out as I'm trying to sift through it. And as mentioned earlier, the box on the right here is slightly smaller than the box on the left, so this one can fit inside this one. Another reason why I decided to go with furring strips is the ability to make all my cuts with just one main tool, the miter saw. Now if by chance you don't have a miter saw, you might be able to do all these cuts with a circular saw and a straight edge if you're very careful. Now my first cuts are gonna be with the one by two and I'm gonna need two at 10 and a half and two at 19 and a half. To keep this simple, I'd like to join these pieces of wood just using a butt joint. Now in most cases, you would join it like that just to give it a little more strength, but I actually need a little more surface area and so I'd like to join it like this. So let's give it a shot. Now I first lined up all the pieces on my mat here to kind of give me a grid pattern so I know everything is square. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of glue on each end, clamp it together, and try and put some screws all the way through the ends. And since these boxes are gonna be in the water a good bit, I'm gonna use number three glue since it's waterproof. And while that's drying, I'm gonna cut out the one by four for the top section. So I need two pieces at 13 and a half and two at 18. For the upper portions, I am going to attach them in an upright fashion to make them a little bit easier to glue and screw together. Now that I have the top and bottom portions complete, I need to attach the wire mesh to this bottom portion and then I'm gonna attach them together. And that way it'll sandwich them in there and hold that wire mesh nice and tight. Now considering this right here will be the top box, it will be filtering out the larger materials, so I need the quarter inch screen. When I'm lining up the mesh here on the frame, I'm gonna come in about a quarter to an eighth of an inch, and that way as my fingers run along the side of this, it doesn't get scraped by the metal. I'm also gonna go in about a quarter to an eighth of an inch on the sides, so I'm gonna have to trim this to fit. But before I cut this, I'm actually going to line everything up in this one corner, put a couple staples along this side, and that'll allow me to pull this tight with the extra length and put some staples in this side. Now we're gonna take that bottom piece and we're going to align it right along the edge of that top frame. And then we're gonna take a bunch of screws and put along the edge to hold it nice and tight. The top sifting box is pretty much done. There is a little bit more give in the wire than I was hoping, but that's okay. And hey, it makes a pretty cool sound. I guess I created an instrument too. In any case, let me cut out the rest of the wood to create the secondary frame, the one that goes below it that this will sit in, and we'll work on that. Now here's the bottom frame for the bottom box, and I'm gonna attach it in the same fashion as I did the top box. The only difference is that these are a little bit longer. This is 21 and a quarter, and this is 12 and a quarter. And the dimensions for the top portion are 15 and a quarter and 19 and three quarters. Now that I have part of the bottom one assembled, let's test fit this top one to make sure it's gonna fit. 
Oh yeah, that fits in a nice with just a little bit of room on each side. Perfect. And just like we did with the quarter inch on the first box, we're now going to try to attach the 20 mesh on the second. On this finer mesh, it's a lot more flexible, so I decided to give it a lot more staples to give it a little added strength. I also discovered on this finer mesh that a heavy duty pair of scissors works the best to cut. And just like the first box, we're going to attach the bottom to the top using some screws. The frames are nearly complete. Now when I stick the top one inside the bottom one, it's a little hard to tell, but there's not a whole lot of room in here for the material to fall through this top one and to the bottom one. So it'd be nice if I could have it lifted up just a little bit while it's resting inside the larger. So to do that, I think I'm going to add some pedestals in the corners. And to keep this simple, I'm just gonna use the leftover one by two furring strips, and I believe I'm gonna cut some two and a half inch strips, and that should work well. I'm gonna need four of those, and I'm just gonna do it on a miter saw. Then I'm just gonna place it in a corner and add a screw. Now those are fitting together much nicer. I really like that the little area in between for the stuff to fall through. The only downside I'm seeing right now is a way to kind of hold them together. As you can see here, it's really far apart. With just a couple fingers on the bottom, I can barely reach my thumb onto the top. And just in case I'm trying to shake this around a little bit more violently or the water's flowing really heavily, then it could easily separate and cause problems. So I'm thinking if I do it, maybe a hole in the bottom here for my fingers and a hole in the top here for my thumb, then I can hold everything together a little bit easier. So let's work on that. Now, of course, we don't want to make this hole too low. Otherwise, those fine pebbles and sediment we're actually trying to look through could flow out the side. So we definitely need to come up a little bit from the bottom. But we also want to leave some room at the top so there's strength in the woods. So we want to make sure we come down a little bit as well. So I believe if I come down an inch and up an inch, I can have about an inch and a half of height so I can stick my fingers in easily. I've traced everything out with a pencil and I'm going to draw each of the corners with a large bit so they'll each have a rounded edge and then I'm just going to use a jigsaw to cut out the rest. And to make the hole for the thumb, I'm going to use a one and a quarter Forstner bit. Here's a little lesson for myself and so you don't repeat it. I, uh, I have a long screw going up through here and I just realized I hit it with the bit and well hopefully I didn't dull the bit too bad but uh, I'm going to have to remove that screw and put a shorter one. Uh, if you look real close you can probably see where I hit it with a bit. And after almost destroying that first bit I was able to make a hole in both sides and now my thumb and fingers can fit in both of these boxes real nicely. It allows me to grab both of them and they don't move around. This will allow me to sift out that top one then lift it off and be able to then sift out that bottom one with plenty of control and not worry about dropping the box. With these finally complete, I am super excited to get out and use them. In fact, my wife and I here in the near future are going to be heading out to the Crater of Diamonds out in Arizona. Sorry, Arkansas. I always get those mixed up for some reason. In any case, we're hoping to find a diamond or two, and that would be really cool. Now, if by chance you know of any other places we can go gem hunting, it doesn't have to be diamond hunting, it's just some kind of gem hunting, maybe rubies or amethyst or anything along those lines, and please put those in the comments. I'd love to know about them, so maybe, just maybe, my wife and I can head off that way sometime soon. So, if you enjoyed this project, make sure you check out this next one.